gold mining. We explore the issue here on Ghana tonight. Also, there's been a long-running battle between the Opposition National Democratic Congress and the Electoral Commission of Ghana over the credibility of the voters register. But are there really any questions about the register and how should this impasse be resolved? What is the kind of audit that the NDC is asking for? We have details for you ahead of that demonstration nationwide demonstration tomorrow in all 16 regions the ndc give an indication of what they intend to do going forward the ghana police service has also detailed uh, the routes that have been approved and agreed upon measures they have put in place as well call it the enough is enough demonstration we'll find out exactly what's been happening ahead of tomorrow stay with us here on your election command center, as always, you are an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and on X. Let's get talking. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. The Ghana Police Service says it has put in place all relevant security measures for the Enough is Enough demonstration organized by the National Democratic Congress. Having communicated the responsibilities to the organizers, the police say they will hold organizers and participants responsible if they breach any rules during the nationwide protest. The NDC would on Tuesday begin a series of protests across the country to demand for the forensic audit of the 2024 voters' register. The organizers of the demonstration have been duly notified of their responsibilities under Section 3 of the Public Order Act 1994, Act 491. The organizers have also been informed that they have a duty to abide by all other laws since they will be held responsible for any breaches. The Forum for Development and Accountable Governance is urging an independent forensic audit of the voter register ahead of the 2024 general elections, citing concerns over widespread anomalies allegations of manipulation and the Electoral Commission's inaction to address them. The firm seeks to ensure the integrity and credibility of the electoral process. The dismissive reaction from the Electoral Commission only exacerbates these concerns, leading us to believe that the integrity of the 2024 general elections is at risk. In the light of this development, ladies and gentlemen, we unequivocally joined the growing chorus of voices demanding an independent forensic audit of the voter register. The Institute of Economic Affairs says it will not compel any political party to participate in its presidential evening encounters and debates. This was after the spokesperson for Dr. Mahmoud Baumier's campaign team Dennis Miracles Abuaji indicated that the NPP will not be part of the debate if the NDC is not participating. The IEA insists that the debate is to strengthen democracy and not duopoly. The purpose of the evening encounters and the debate is to provide a platform for the candidates to present their visions, plans, strategies and explain further their manifestos to the electorate and allow the electorate to ask questions to enable them make informed choices on election day, 7th December, 2024. NPP flag bearer Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has chided former President John Mahama for making remarks that he considers unbefitting of a former head of state. This comes after the NDC flag bearer criticized the clergy, traditional leaders and civil society organizations for not holding the NPP government accountable. Who said, 
He's realized he's about losing miserably, so everything gets him angry. I have heard him insulting the clergy, traditional leaders, imams, CSOs. He says they are all hypocrites. Should such statements come from a former president? The flag bearer of the NDC says any individual who intends to foment trouble and chaos during the elections will face the wrath of Ghanaians. Speaking at Katamanso as part of the Greater Accra Regional Campaign, John Mahama expressed anger at comments deemed suggestive that the NPP government will not hand over power to the NDC if it wins the December polls. The people of Ghana are going to decide who their leaders are for the next four years. It is not in anybody's hand to say that when the people of Ghana have expressed their will, for that person to say, we shall hand over. You don't have that capacity to stand against the people of Ghana when they have said NDC has won the election and you say you won't hand over. My God. <laughs> The Bank of Ghana's 2023 annual fraud report indicates cash theft or cash suppression was the most common type of fraud committed by bank staff accounting for 77% of reported cases. While the overall number of fraud cases in the banking sector increased slightly by 5% in 2023, the total loss value associated with these cases rose by 7% to 88 million cities, while attempted fraud cases in the banking and SDI sectors declined sharply by 59% in 2023 compared to 2022, the total loss value associated with these cases stood at approximately 72 million cities, a 29% increase over the 2022 figure of 56 million cities recorded. He emphasizes the importance of awareness and prevention measures to address these fraud trends and ensure the integrity of the banking system. Oh, that's money on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next to audit the voters register or not? That's the question on the minds of many on the, the both sides of this particular conversation. We hear the arguments for and against this call by the NDC. But then again, we're clear in our minds what the party says it is going to do uh, beginning tomorrow and also across all 16 regions of the country. We'll tell you exactly what the Ghana Police Service has also been saying ahead of that. But this is your election command center with some 83 days to election day, December 7. We remain your election command center. Let's get into it now, but key individuals and groups are making a strong case for an audit of the voters' register as demanded by the opposition of the Democratic Congress, NDC, despite the Electoral Commission of, of Ghana being adamant to that particular call. But we're getting into this matter and having some notable persons who have also joined in the conversation and that call for an audit to be considered here on your election command center. The Electoral Commission has been clear on its stance. There is no need for any form of audit of this electoral register going into the elections. Here's Dr. Bosman Asari speaking to my colleague, Noble Cosby Annan, is a deputy chair of the Electoral Commission. Take a look. When you talk about a forensic audit, it, it sends a signal that you have a massive bloat of the register, which we don't have. So as far as the commission is concerned, we think that there is no need for an audit. And you know, we gave the register to the parties in 2020. 
we gave it to them in 2023. So we think that the parties themselves should be in a position to be able to assess whether all the details they themselves put together during the registration in 2020, in 2023, 2024, they are intact but you know since the, the the register we gave to the ndc we gave to the mpp uh, the gfp all the parties now that document has changed because the exhibition was meant to do corrections we say without any shadow of doubt that all the problems you have identified which is influencing you to call for an audit all the problems we have also identified but for you to be convinced, we are calling you because you are interested in a credible register. The EC, our penchant, our, what is uh, motivating us is that we, want, we are producing a document that is robust, that is credible to use in the December 7th general election. No, we, we think that what will change something is the discussion table. We come in together. Although we can see that political parties is, 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 is something which is entrenched in our laws, individuals can come together and demonstrate, express uh, concerns as far as they have certain things to express concerns about. So that one is not a problem to have. But we think that if the objective of the NDC is a solution to have... Well, so that's Dr. Bosman Asari there and uh, saying a, num a number of things, touching on the demonstration and then also the decision by the NDC, in fact, to resort to that particular avenue to drum home their issues. But there are a number of people who have not just raised questions about the Electoral Commission's position, but also supported the NDC's call for a forensic audit. And I'm going to run you through it in a bit. Um, Professor Kwekwasari is the Center for Democratic Development, CDD fellow, and then also the dean of the UPSA Law School, Professor Kofi Abochi, have all joined in. The latest is from the Civic Forum Initiative, That's a group of CSOs, including the Institute for Democratic Governance, IDEC, who are asking the Electoral Commission to consider that call for an audit of the register. Now, running through a brief part of the statement that this uh, Civic Forum Initiative issued just some few minutes ago. Take a look at this. They say the NDC has a legitimate right to demand a register that is fit for purpose. However, we are also mindful of the potential risks that large-scale demonstrations can pose, particularly in the current politically charged environment. That we believe that the impasse between the NDC and the Electoral Commission can be resolved without confrontation. Instead, it requires sincere and constructive dialogue between all stakeholders involved. And finally, they make this proposal that the Electoral Commission commits to an independent audit of the final voters register once it is completed and in good time. The emphasis there, that proposal for an independent audit of the final voters register. So, then we, we put a question to Sami Jemfi, who is the National Communications Officer of the NDC. Asked, what exactly is this audit they are asking for? What does it entail? Now, he gives some detail on Key Point on Saturday here on TV3. Take a look. We are saying that because of what happened in the case of Pusiga, we must have an, a forensic audit. Let me demystify the, that term forensic audit. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? We are talking about all political parties nominating IT experts and people who are well versed in the systems for our voters register to sit with reps of the EC to investigate because the register is in an encrypted IT system. And it is only through such an investigation that we can know those who have entered the EC's register mm -hmm. and whether or not they entered those registers those, the register at the right time and with authorization yeah. because the system mm -hmm. will have the footprints of mm -hmm. all those entries. Mm -hmm. Every electoral management body must be interested in being a fair umpire that all stakeholders have confidence in. So it is in the interest of every electoral management body to be transparent so that stakeholders can have confidence in you. 
So, so that's Sami Jenfi there. And what are the issues the NDC is raising? They say some 3,957 voters who are the 2023 voters register have been excluded, deleted from the 2024 provisional voters register. And the NDC has compared the 2023 voters register to a 2024 provisional voters register. And these were the preliminary findings. Also, that 2,094 voters transferred their voters in 2024, but their details are not contained in the 2024 absent list for their respective polling stations. This calls into question, they say, the, the, the leg legality, validity of the said transfers. Also, 243,000 voters who transferred their votes in 2020 have been added to the 2024 transfer list again thereby making it difficult to ascertain the accurate number of voters 2024 transfers made to the affected polling stations. The 2024 provisional voters register and transfer list are therefore bloated. That's 243 they identified. And comparing the 2023 voters register to the 2024 provisional voters register and the preliminary findings is what they put out there, including a number of issues. Well, let's, let's get into it now. Dr. Emmanuel Akwete is a chairperson of this Civic Forum Initiative, also as executive director of the Institute for Democratic Governance, IDEC. They're one of the signatories to this statement I just ran through. Dr. Akwete, thank you for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. First off, let me find out from you. Essentially, with all the things at play right now, the position of the Electoral Commission is taking and the questions and concerns the NDC has raised, you are also calling for an independent audit of the register to be considered by the Electoral Commission, correct? Um, yes, um, I think because of the evidence of mistrust between the two institutions, um, I think uh, it ought to be resolved. And if bilaterally they can't do the job, um, because of their suspicions, then it's important to have a third party, like an arbitrator. You know, in every situation where there is an impasse, or two people cannot sit together, George, or in, uh, across all domains, you get, you get a third person that they could talk through to be able to find a way forward. And truly, it's in our interest that um, MPP uh, sorry, NDC and MPP and uh, the, the uh, Electoral Commission uh, are always to discuss issues in a very cordial manner. You know, they are the referees, they are the rule makers, uh, FIFA and its referees and footballers, no matter the tension, no, no matter uh, the stakes, they find a way to work together. And I think uh, that is what we can say now. Mm. Um, we, we were a bit concerned about um, if it's the register and uh, its, its integrity and credibility and what would assure that we think it should be a conversation, but we have two dominant parties, major parties, the other ones in parliament today, and they tend to have a strong following. So when it got to the point where uh, NDC would call us uh, mobilize citizens and its members on the industry to put pressure for something to be done. We thought that we could also add our voice. Uh, this EC is the only thing we have. It's excelled. It's Africa uh, on it, and it's, it's worked across countries and really become the standard bearer, you know. And it ought to be, in a way, in in on the basis of what is achieved confidently resolve some of these issues without uh, us getting into uh, situations that has potential danger. Nobody wants violence, uh, but let's see how they will resolve this issue. And we move on. We've done uh, incredibly well in, in sustaining our mm -hmm. democracy electorally. So, so this is why we issued the statement to show that it's, um, they, it's lies with, it lies within their power. Right and within their hands and minds right. to resolve issues that will still strengthen Ghana in, in the, as the beacon of democracy in the sub-region, if not the whole. And rightly so. Dr. Kote, and I, I'll kindly plead with you if you could sit back a bit for me, because uh, I keep losing the part of your head. So sit back a bit for me, so, so we continue. But essentially, I, I get the point that even for you, this civic forum call you make, 
the consideration of an independent audit of the register would boost confidence in the electoral commission itself and also the, the trust that you talk about for the commission is it not um i think there there has been a precedent under uh, uh dr farijan uh, distinguished first um, uh, chair of the commission in the in the fourth republic and um what he did eventually was to invite experts from outside the commission to go through uh, the register and the data they had there was a, a private uh, accounting firm kpmg I'm, I'm not i haven't referred to my my notes was there i think government side the audit service and various other institutions came together when they went through this process that was 2008 elections again it was ndc in opposition and fighting to come to power, and they saw problems with uh, the data initially in Kumase, over bloated, and secondly, they raised issues uh, across. Eventually, they did that, and um, it helped us go through the elections relatively peacefully. So it's not something they haven't done. There's precedent, and the commission uh, taps into a wealth of uh, uh, strategies and approaches to getting this work done uh, to the cheers of everybody. So we felt that uh, where mistrust is so deep and and they cannot bilaterally resolve the issue, get a third party. Because in the case of 20, 2008, yes, when the independent group that was appointed came up with results, both of them moved forward. So, so with that precedent, we have no basis whatsoever to get this, you know, spilling out of our hands and creating a, a situation uh, that we do not want in, in this year. Uh, and as you know, um, this is not a particularly good time for, for us to get into uh, such disagreements and our supporters uh, or supporters of parties misinterpreting what is happening and inciting violence, we don't need this. You know, this can be resolved. And having a credible register is good. But dialogue sometimes has this uh, content as well, where uh, the parties will disagree. True. But arbitration helps. And if that could go forward, I believe that we would have laid one of the important conditions for the credible election, that there is peace. Mm. And the EC is respected and trusted, and so is the EEC's relations with the parties, uh, not just NDC. It, it's in, also uh, instructive. MPP as well, and the other parties. In, indeed. It's instructive that you, you make reference to precedence. The fact that this call for this audit of the register is not new, essentially, really, in, in our electoral history as a country and what happened in 2008. But then again, the Electoral Commission's position this time around is that the exhibition exercise is one of the corrective measures or exercises in the in the entire chain of the electoral process and so the exhibition has corrected the issues the ndc raised reason why they say the audit call is not necessary not very important in their view well if no issue has been raised by the uh, the uh, by the uh, uh, the party the NDC, then that's fine. But it's a major party with a major following. And to call a nationwide strike, not only of their parties, but asking citizens to join to rectify something, simply means there's a breakdown in dialogue and confidence across the board. So that's what we are trying to promote, that uh, they've worked for a long time, you know, since 1992, we are in our 34th year. Okay, or 32, yes, 1992, now 20, yes, we are, we, are, we are in the 32 years and we should really look forward to uh, some of these issues being uh, managed within the institutional framework. IPAC is, is, is a, an innovation of the EC, it's now global, all of Africa. Uh, let's look at the dialogue side of things too, no matter how difficult. There should be other mechanisms, and that's why I think that getting professionals, independent 
uh, uh, qualified uh, officials to sit and look at this objectively because they are not going to contest elections. They don't have aspirations to be MPs or presidents and so on and so forth. It's an option. Alternative dispute resolution <laughs> is mm. even adopted by the, by the courts. Right. It's always the rigid thing. So we believe sincerely that the stakes are high and so it would affect uh, the referee and how people perceive the referee, maybe the actions it takes and how it handles things. How it... So, so these things are normal and natural, but we should have mechanisms for their resolution. And we believe we have it within uh, the country and the EC has always stood up uh, in some of these matches and the different leaders they've had. They should be able to resolve this. Right. They shouldn't get out of control whereby we are seeing violence because of this uh, across the country. Okay. You know, that would not be good for, for, for all of us. So our EC is highly respected. And our parties, there are many who also see our parties as, you know, a country with a history of coups and so on, now being so stable and having parties that, although we have two dominant ones, mm. um, I think it's part of the evolution. But we've handled the elections very well. And we think that this impasse must be, must be resolved and can be resolved by bringing in the uh, so. external. Uh, Indeed. And I do appreciate your time and, and your recommendations on this issue. And with, with your rich experience of your involvement in many ways in the elections in this country, thank you for the diagnosis and the recommendations that you put us, of course, in this Civic Forum initiative, which I think is a secretariat for as well. Dr. Emmanuel Akwete is Executive Director of the Institute for Democratic Governance, IDEC. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. A number of people who have also been making that call for the consideration of, of an audit by the Electoral Commission. Let's, let's take a look at this. That's Alan Kojo Chamanting is the leader for the Movement for Change. says it's, it, this audit would only go to enhance the credibility of the Commission. Forensic audit has to be done. He's not sure why there should be a resistance to that because the Electoral Commission has indicated that they have responded to those comments. Also, Professor Kofi Abochi is the dean of the UPSC Law School. He says whose mandate is rooted in perceptions of fairness and neutrality. It is in its own interest and that of Ghana that it dispels not fight allegations of a bloated register through an audit, as the Electoral Commission says. The EC's position on the request for an audit of the register is baffling and even troubling. For even if they deny the merit of the claims, audits by their nature confirm or refute allegations. And essentially making the point that for a constitutional body that has uh, its mandate rooted in the perceptions of fairness and neutrality, it is in its own interest and that of Ghana that it dispels not fight allegations of a bloated registered for that matter and essentially making that point and issues are coming up as well on this. But well, let's stay further on this matter. Coming up next on, on Ghana tonight, the National Democratic Congress will tomorrow take to the streets across all 16 regions to register their displeasure about the Electoral Commission's handling of issues regarding the concerns they have raised about the voters register that was exhibited and the issues identified by the NDC. Earlier today, the Ghana Police Service addressed the press, giving details of the measures that they have put in place across all 16 regions, the routes that have been agreed upon as well, ahead of that NDC nationwide, enough is enough demonstration. Take a look. Measures have been put in place to ensure security for the planned demonstration by the National Democratic Congress, which is scheduled for tomorrow, 17th September 2024, in all regional capitals across the country. As part of preparations for the demonstration, the Ghana Police Service has extensively engaged the leadership of the NDC and the Electoral Commission. The organizers of the demonstration have been duly notified of their responsibilities under Section 3 of the Public Order Act 1994, Act 491. The organizers have also been informed 
that they have a duty to abide by all other laws since they will be held responsible for any breaches. We would like to urge the organizers and also all participants in this demonstration to adhere to these arrangements and ensure full compliance of laws and all regulation. I'd like to once again give our assurance that the police will ensure the maintenance of security, law and order throughout the period of the exercise. Well, that's ACP Grace and Sankrofi there, Director of Public Affairs of the Ghana Police Service, giving details of the measures put in place. Let's say a bit further on this because she makes reference to the responsibility that the organizers of the demonstration also have to take. Well, Dr. Tanko Computer, the Deputy Director of IT and Elections for the NDC, is joining us on Zoom. Dr. Tanko Computer, good evening. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Let me say good evening to your cherished viewers. I can see that you're still on the move, uh, putting final touches to the, the plans ahead of tomorrow. But tell me, the NDC clearly going ahead with this. The Ghana Police Service says there's some responsibility you would have to carry as well to ensure that this is done orderly. What's the plan? Alfred, this is not the first time we are organizing demonstration in Ghana. This press conference by the police is needless, completely needless. I don't know what they intend achieving by that kind of press conference. Is it our first time of organizing press conference in Ghana? Even under this terrible government, we organized several demonstrations. It ended peacefully. We never caused any problem in all the demonstrations that we organized across uh, the regions and then the national capital. So what, what, what are they telling us? As if this is our first time of organizing demonstration. But, 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 but be, 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 beyond, this, beyond this, they also detail the routes that have been agreed upon, some information, obviously, that the media needs to know. That's some relevant information, is it not? By the way, that one is clear. We, we met them and we all agreed to the route that we are going to use. We told them it's a peaceful demonstration. We are just going to present our petition to the Speaker of Parliament and then in Mensa. And so we don't intend to uh, to cause any uh, mayhem or to, 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 to destabilize the peace of the, the, the regions as we are going to embark the demonstration tomorrow. So I don't know where they are coming from. But mind you, we have also picked intelligence from their wings. Those party boys, they've recruited and put them as as as, as, as police. If they misbehave with us, the wolf honey is there with us tomorrow. That one, that's why we want the police to be professional. We know they are leaders. They are very professional. Those, but those party boys, they should be mindful that they are now wearing the national uniform, police uniform, and not party uniform. If that is what they want, they, they intend to do tomorrow, then they will have showdown with us. That one, they were not going to take kindly with it. And so that's why we are also telling the leadership. We met them, and we told them, point blank, in our meeting with them, that we want professionalists because we know them. The last demonstrations we held, it was very peaceful. The police were very professional. We, 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 we thank them for what they did. And we want to have the same professionalism tomorrow. But if they bring these party boys who are wearing a uh, police uniform to misbehave with us, we are going to take a because we are all Ghanaians. And it's our democratic right to demonstrate. We know that we are coming to power in the next three months. And so, therefore, we want to make sure that we come to power and have all government installation intact, everything intact. So we are not ready to destroy anything, to destabilize anything, because we are coming to power in the next three months. So we are not ready to do that. We will make sure that it's peaceful. I see. But you, you mentioned something briefly about presenting a petition to the Speaker of Parliament, right, Honorable Alba Suman Agbabin, and also uh, Madam Jen Mensah, the EC Chair herself, correct? Very well. That's what we, are, we intend doing tomorrow. I see. And uh, run me through the, the, the route, at least, for the Greater Accra region. Where, where exactly yeah. are you converging and going through and before you present these petitions to these two bodies? We are converging at Obra Sport, at Circle, uh, at 7, 7 a.m. in the morning. Everybody will converge at Obra Sport. We'll pass through uh, Paris School Junction, uh, through that one, to, through to... Uh, 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 
uh, uh, National Theatre. We will pass through uh, uh, the stadium uh, site. From the stadium, we'll move straight uh, to Parliament and to Parliament to present the petition to Parliament, uh, Speaker of Parliament. From there, you know, the, the Electoral Commission is closer uh, to Parliament. They are new building, the Corporate Affairs building. Uh, we will go there. That's why we will terminate. We will present the petition to them. Uh, we, we expect that all the commissioners should be there. We are friendly to them. In fact, we've been engaging them. They are not our enemies. We are, the EC is not our enemy. We are major stakeholders to whatever they are doing. Uh, so nobody should think that we are antagonizing them and all that. We just want them to do the right thing. That is what we are expecting from them, that they should do the right thing. They shouldn't think that because they were appointed by this current administration, they should be doing their bidding. They should live above reproach. That's why we will just want them to, uh, 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 to behave. And so they are not our enemies. We, we, Electoral Commission is not our enemy. We, we know that they are to conduct the election 2024, December 7th. But we want them to do the right thing. Right. That is what we are just expecting from them. Right. And, and with the other regions where this demonstration will also be taking place, what will be the termination point? What, what are going, they going to do at the end? Because you're going to present petitions to the EC and Parliament. But what's going to be happening? Well, yes, the regions too, they are also going to present petitions to the regional directors of elections, electoral commission uh, in the 15 regions. Yes, they, they are also presenting, they will, they will terminate at the electoral commission offices where they will do the presentation of the petitions to them. Uh, uh, as we speak now, we are having a, 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 a unified petition. Of course, that is what we, the only thing, the only voice we are all looking for. Of course, you, the media, you are aware. Looking for the audit uh, 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 of the register and the IT systems, of course, re-exhibit of the corrected versions of the register when it is audited. And well, that's, these are the issues we are, we are looking. In fact, this is not the first time. You know, we, this is not the first time. Their own chairman, Mark Menu in 2016, was in the forefront calling for audit of the register. Their own youth organizer was calling for audit of the register. Their own running mate, Baumia, was, was talking of audit because some 80,000 uh, Togolese were in the register. Madam Charlotte uh, Osse accepted the, the challenge and formed a committee to do the audit. They didn't. They did organize an audit. We all made appearance before the, the committee, Justice Club Committee, so why is Jinmen running away from audit? What, what are they hiding? Why are they running away from audit? With all the compelling evidence we have espoused about the register and all that, they still uh, think that there's no need for audit. Look at the, at the time when these MPP people were in power and they were calling for the audit. They were only talking of some uh, 76,000 to 80,000 Togolese. Today, look at the figures we are talking. Almost right. close to 1 million voters have been manipulated in the register. And you think we should allow this to go? Okay. And uh, tomorrow, we'll certainly be there across all the 16 regions to update our viewers and our listeners on radio as well, every step of the way. Dr. Rashid Tanko Computer, thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. I'm grateful. Is a Deputy Director of ITN Elections for the NDC. This is your Election Command Center. Stay with us tomorrow across all media journal platforms. We'll be updating you right from the beginning of the demonstration across all the 16 regions every step of the way until the end of the demonstration here across all media journal platforms. This is your Election Command Center. Coming up next. We assess the mining licensing regime in Ghana and how that impacts on the fight against illegal mining and whether or not we should be concerned, especially about getting to know now the number of mining that's licenses for small-scale mining that has been issued over the period. But first off, I want to give you an idea of why this issue of Galamse really should, should concern all of us. That, that, reality check on a daily basis that it is not one that we can just leave to chance and in a period of no action talk only something must be done differently this time around some members or persons who identify themselves as members of the mpp in the suhum constituency showed up at the uh, community manifesto program that we do here on tv3 on new day they have evidence of the polluted Densu River, which was at some point the major source of drinking water for the community until now that they are unable to drink this Densu River water because of the level of pollution as we speak. And guess what? 
The Ghana Water Company Limited also relies on that Dinsen River to provide water for some parts of the eastern region and some part of the greater Accra region as well. So think about it. Take a look. The borehole, you, you get, what, what do you get from the borehole? I don't understand. The thing is that when you bath with the water, you, you get it. You, you eat, eat. You yes. eat. You eat. And then. And, and why is that? It's at Kobo uh, Densusu. Um, why? Why does, why, is, why does that happen? Why do you eat when you bath with the borehole water? Yes, you do it for no reason. Because it, maybe it is Galamse right. or any other thing else. Uh, Roland, we don't even mind this one. But I, I have condemned Galamse. I, I have condemned it. I have, I have condemned it already. So now I am moving forward okay. and what to do? What to do? To whom needs, to whom needs a leader who will be able to move through, who will be able to move through heaven and earth to ensure that what the good people of Suhum need, they attend to them. Well, so the full complement of this is on New Day tomorrow morning, the community manifesto, bringing the microphone to your community and giving you a voice. Let your voice be heard here on the election command center. We'll be in a constituency near you as we've traveled in a number of constituencies already. And we're going to do that right till some days before December 7. And that's why we are your election command center. But Member of Parliament for the North Town constituency is raising concerns about the number of mining licenses issued under the Kufuado Baumia led uh, New Patriotic Party administration. But as compared to what was issued under the XL NDC government, right from the late J.E.M. Mills till the end of 2016, he made this observation on key point over the weekend. Take a look. So this is the Mills Mahama ATS, 56. And it's an open source, open database. Where did you get this information the from? The Ghana repository uh, for mining. So all the mining lists so are there. this is online It's online. You it's can online. find it. You can find it. Only 56 ATS. ATS, Mills Mahama, 56. Publicly verifiable document. Publicly verified, 56 mining leases. Where, where then are? I come to, I decide to download President Akufuado's own. I almost collapsed. Look at it. 1,503. Mining leases. Mining leases in just seven and a half years. Are you aware that as we are having this Galamse brouhaha now, the, the justifiable anger, outrage, upheaval, because we face an existential threat. What is happening is mass murder. They are driving all of us to the cemeteries. They are killing us. One would have thought that at least these licenses will be suspended. It is going on. I found out that on September 4, one day, they gave out 12 licenses. One day. The 4th of September. Between August and September this year, this last few weeks, last few days, actually. They have given out 38 licenses. That's, look, in the midst of this uproar. That's some of the good to talk about here. So here's what we did. And this is something that I urge you, our viewers, to make some time, go online, look out for Ghana Mining Repository. Because there's information that's there. And one of the things we're trying to do is to empower you, our viewers, as well, to get the most verifiable public documents that you can see. So this is it. In 2009, three licenses, 2009, and three licenses were issued as small-scale mining licenses. In 2010, three. In 2011, four. In 2012, seven. 2013, five. 2014, seven. 2015, four. 2016, 23. The total between 2009 and 2016, 56. That was the Mills Mahama administration, number of mining licenses issued. Then let's continue. In 2017, when the Ecofuado Baumia administration assumed the, the reins of power, five licenses were issued. In 2018, 16, 2019, 84, 
2020, 780, 2021, 43, 2022, 185, 2023, 240, and 2024, so far, 150. That comes up to 1,503. That, that was what was put out by Samuel Okujotua Blakwa, Member of Parliament for the North Thong constituency. And, and that's where the concern is right now. But really, is there, is there an issue with this huge numbers we're seeing? The increased numbers of these mining licenses issued within this period of this administration. Dr. Tony Obin is a former Chief Executive Officer of the Minerals Commission. And he, he is really wealth of knowledge and experience in this mining industry. Dr. Obin, appreciate you. Thank you for staying up to join us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, let's establish this. Is there a concern about the numbers we're seeing? Over 1,500 mining licenses issued over the last over seven and a half years. That's against what was issued in the last two, between 2009 and 2016. Yes, thank you very much for having me and uh, good evening or good morning to your cherished viewers. Um, if you look at the statistics, it is quite strange because uh, the, you know, for about five years, very few uh, licenses were granted. Um, I think it was less than, I think for, for two years, it was less than 50 or around 50. So 1,500 uh, raises uh, some eyebrow. But one could also look at it positively, uh, that, that because they were not getting licenses, that would expose them to working illegally. Uh, but the one thing that we need to understand is that it is not only licenses that made people work legally or, or illegally. If you had the documents, uh, if you had a concession, and you are working outside the concession, you are working illegally. If, um, I mean, as, as you know, the licenses are not granted just as, as uh, you could do anywhere, like the driver's license where one license can drive any type of vehicle. I mean, like if you have a, a license B, you can drive Mercedes, you can drive a Land Cruiser and all that. In the case of small scale mining or mining in general, once you have a license, it is based on the specific concession, on the area where it is granted. So people sometimes take the license, flaunt it to people, uh, regulators, or maybe law enforcement agencies who do not appreciate, who do not understand, and say, look, I have a license. Meanwhile, the person is working outside the, 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 the area that is linked to the license. So uh, it could be strange that at, within a short period, you have 1,500 uh, licenses issues, you want to wonder which people were given the licenses. What did they do uh, to get all these licenses? But uh, if you look at it from the other side, you might say, well, once uh, they have the licenses, then they are supposed to do it according to the requirement of their license. So it's, it's a kind of a, a very complex uh, uh, situation. But there are a number of questions that you ask, Dr. Tony Obin. Who were giving these licenses? What are they doing with them? But then, uh, obviously, you, you, you come to the reality that if they've been given licenses, then they, they're going to utilize them. But has the issuance of these many licenses with the objective of regularizing and preventing I illegality, has it really been achieved? Because the evidence of Galamse is right before our eyes, is it not? Absolutely. So that's the point I made. People will have the licenses and flaunt it and say that, look, I have the license and therefore I can mine anywhere. I can mine in the water, but if you go and arrest me, so me, I have the license to mine. Meanwhile, it is completely outlawed. It's com completely uh, illegal to work on the water bodies. So the, 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 the holding of the license per se does not suggest an improvement in the in in in, in the, you know in the enforcement or in the regulation of that space it is rather that people have the license to do what, what they have to do on the specific grounds the one that is not happening uh the license means nothing and and that's what we see but even after getting that many licenses um people, you know the, the situation has gotten worse all right. So it, it just suggests that 
the person is doing it illegally or those who, who have the license may be doing that illegally. And, and rightly so, and that's what we see right before us. But before I let you go, that's, that's an issue that we you, you want to comment on because there's a video that's gone viral with you in there suggesting some involvement in illegal mining. What exactly is the issue? Recent, I don't know if you have seen a, a, a video making the rounds. Yes. With yes. My, with my picture there and all that. That's right. Uh, and uh, I have just been looking for opportunity to let the whole world understand that this is a complete for food. I, I was there even as that was 2022. I was there even on my own group that went there. I never spoke even on the video. If you look at if you watch it carefully, I never opened my mouth. I never uttered anything. Yet you have people who are who are maliciously peddling the falsehood that are going to encourage illegal miners to continue doing illegal mining. That is further far from the truth because my whole life in the industry have been, you know, based on trying to ensure that proper mining takes place. I believe small scale mining is a good thing for Ghana, but I believe that responsible small scale mining is what should be done in this country. Only today, I saw in my Facebook page, what I had said eight years ago, my Facebook page, what I had said eight years ago, which said that the, the, the politicians must be very circumspect in, in, in this business because every four years, during the campaign, uh, people right. say things, the politicians say things, and that if it were possible, all politicians, all uh, uh, all uh, presidential candidates must agree to say that in the elections, to say when we come to power, we will encourage more skill uh, illegal illegal mining. mining indeed. And I thank you very much, at least, for speaking to this as well and then also uh, hearing your side of the issue. But thank you. Dr. Tony Obin is a former uh, executive director of the Minerals Commission talking to us there here on Ghana tonight.